So this is the week five part one video and I can guarantee that this week is going to be at least two videos because there's a lot. Um, so this week we're going to talk about data mining and machine learning. Now there used to be in this program, there used to be a data mining class and a machine learning class, but effectively there was a lot of overlap between the two. The machine learning sort of didn't work out as a separate course because um, it just didn't. And then data wrangling now replaces machine learning. So data mining effectively took over the material for machine learning. And so data mining is actually the next course in this program. And to some extent, I'm a little biased. It's probably my favorite course um, just because it's a lot of the material that I used in like the last 20 years ago when I was a grad student, I did my master's stuff and similar techniques and stuff. And it's just kind of like fun stuff. Um, there used to be this term big data. It's sort of this, you don't hear this as much. Now it's like data analytics, data science kind of stuff. The term big data just means lots and lots of data. Technically, like data mining is usually seen as like a big data technique, but there's no reason that data mining techniques cannot be used on smaller data sets. There's just, there's no tie to that. Like um, data mining is sort of like something that's sort of associated with large data sets, but you can use them on like data sets with 20 values. The techniques are still valid. So our first thing is to talk about what the heck data mining actually is. Okay. Data mining is basically the process of discovering patterns, relationships, and information. And I should take the word large out of here. Um, it uses a hybrid of techniques. It's not really any of these things individually. It's not really statistical. You really don't need a lot of statistics to do data mining. It's not really mathematical. The techniques are mathematically based, but I mean, so are like just about everything else. I mean, so is weather prediction, but you don't actually need like high level math to like read the weather maps, but, um, and computational techniques. Typical data mining classes were generally sort of out of computer science classes and sort of spurned out of the database world. Like I also teach at Bunker Hill part-time, but their, their data analytics program is still like in computer science and still sort of like much more sort of tied to like database people. Whereas our program sort of thinks of it more in a much more general liberal arts sense. Um, sort of data mining is a general technique that you can use for a lot of things. You do not need a lot of like super high level sophisticated math or computer or even statistical skills. Data mining is a bunch of techniques for looking at patterns and relations in a data set. It's not really like super high level, even though typically it's been more of a graduate subject. I learned most of the stuff in my master's and stuff stuff, but that was like 20, 25 years ago. And now it's sort of filtered down to the point where data mining is really much more of like a gen ed kind of thing. And people in business and all kinds of other places should learn these techniques as part of just basic knowledge because we're flooded with data and you gotta do something with it. Um, data mining, again, it's sort of a bunch of exploratory techniques. It's, it's, it's kind of like when you do intro stats, your first couple weeks are like exploratory basic data summaries. It's kind of built on that, but it's not really leading to more statistics. It uses some of the basic statistical measures, but there's also techniques for just looking at how things are associated and just looking for patterns and relationships that really doesn't actually involve a lot of math. Um, so it's kind of, you know, it's a precursor to further, you're looking for patterns in your data. You have some data on sales or whatever, and you're looking for trends and like who's buying stuff. That's what data mining does. It gives you sort of this foundation of techniques for taking a data set and finding and hunting for patterns and things going on in that data that gives you further clues to do either further analysis or just stop there and like you've got something to work with for a business in terms of what's selling together and stuff. So this obviously is a like one week simplified version of the next class um, and the techniques of data mine can roughly be class classified in these four categories. Um, cluster analysis deals with you have data and you're finding like groups of data that go together. Association analysis is kind of a little bit like cluster analysis, but not quite. Um, association analysis is specifically looking for like patterns of buying this product and that product associated with each other. Whereas cluster analysis is looking for like um, groups of like things that go together. It's, it's different, you'll see. Um, classification deals with like whether something's like spam or not. Um, or whether something's like expensive or cheap or um, 
that was a bad example, but um, so, and then text analysis I put in here. We do look at text analysis next week. I put that in with graphing just because like it would end up like this week being like so much stuff and like not that much stuff next week. So it just kind of fit into graphing too. Um, there you go. So, and then the other thing that sort of goes along with this is what is machine learning? Machine learning is the development of algorithms that allow computers to learn from data. This sort of builds on data mining, but it's sort of like machine learning. You can do a lot of data mining without machine learning. Machine learning is not necessarily the same as data mining, but the same techniques used in data mining are used in machine learning and artificial intelligence, which now is like a much bigger thing than I ever thought it would be a couple of years ago. Um, so, and then this kind of like, to me, data mining is totally a data analytics thing. But when we get into sort of machine learning and AI, then we're sort of getting into the computer science -y turf a little bit more. Um, so I would, there's kind of a, you know, I, I kind of like to talk more to computer science people about possibly developing some courses that sort of have this sort of overlap. Because I know there's like the back end, like um, platformy kind of stuff like Snowflake that I don't know much about. But there's sort of like, um, there is like sort of data mining at more of like the sort of like computer science level that I'm not really going to get into here. Um, SAS used to be my favorite software and then they had this nice video. This is kind of old, but um, machine learning, what it is and why it matters. And then distinguishing artificial intelligence, and machine learning. I, I don't know. I mean, machine learning, artificial intelligence to me are sort of the same thing. Um, but to separate that from data mining, data mining is the set of exploratory techniques to find patterns in data upon which AI and machine learning use. But we're going to talk about data mining sort of as data mining without necessarily being machine learning and AI, if that makes any sense. This is an excellent lecture. I put the link to this on Canvas. Um, this guy is like, the, he was the former chancellor of MIT. So like, hey, listen to the guy. It's a really excellent uh, basic lecture on basic machine learning. It's a little bit dated at this point, but again, I like to introduce like people other than me because everything that you learn shouldn't be directly from me because I'm not the smartest person alive. Um, and people have other things to contribute. I also put a link to this. Um, and the reason I link this is this is a book that's really, really old because I think a lot of people think that a lot of this stuff that we're learning is like new. No. Um, a lot of these techniques have been around for kind of a long time. Some of them, I mean, I, 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 my master's in stats is from 2000. Well, it's basically like 99 to 2001 is, and that's like 20, 25 years ago. And sort of like the foundational techniques are the same. So that's like when I tell students this, the sort of basic academic stuff is not probably going to change that much. Um, what will change is the implementation, the different techniques used, the tools that you used, but the sort of foundational concepts in terms of like um, what clustering is, that's not going to change. Um, so one of the first things for us to talk about is this difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. Supervised learning deals with pre-labeled data and unsupervised learning doesn't. Now for Data mining per se, this doesn't make that much of a difference, but for machine learning, it does. So supervised learning is generally classifications, generally supervised learning because you have in the data and that's the label. So you have in the data, like whether credit scores are like good or bad, and you use that to train new data on whether it's good or bad. Whereas with unsupervised data, you basically are at ground zero and you have like nothing to go by and you don't know whether the credit scores are good or bad from the data because that label is not in there. So those are like the two main, like algorithms are typically devised into supervised and unsupervised. So that's why this is kind of an important classification. Um, so let's start with clustering. Clustering is an unsupervised technique. Okay. Clustering is unsupervised. And what you're doing when you cluster is you just like have this data set and you're trying to figure out like how the data will group together. So you might have your data set full of students and say there's like adult students in there and non-adult students and like junior students. So maybe you have like data on um, student age, student, you know, how many credits they have and like things like that. And you can cluster students maybe based on like traditional age students or like 25 to 30 year old students and then like older students, like 
cluster, but you didn't have that label to begin with. You're actually taking it from the data. Okay. Um, the, the clustering technique that I'm going to just introduce you to is called k-means clustering. Um, it's probably the most prevalent method used, meaning that this is the one that most people would use. Okay, so k-means clustering, the first thing that you do is you actually rescale the data to normal scores. Now, I'm not going to get too into this now, but the reason you want to do this is that data typically is on some type of measurement scale. You're like, what the heck? Um, like inches or centimeters or whatnot. And you don't want that in your data when you do something like clustering because clustering is actually using mathematical distances and you need to even out those distances. So what you do is you scale them to a standard normal score, which is what this does. Okay. So, and I'm gonna show this in the lab. This is all gonna be in the lab code, so we'll go through it like in action as well. Um, and so you always, whenever you do a lot of data mining techniques, if they're based on distance, um, the problem is that if one column's like in inches and the other column's like in centimeters, you have like inconsistent measurements because like, admittingly, I don't know my measurement scales that well, but like some distance, some, some scales of measure will sort of like make things bigger or smaller and they'll distort your distances, if that makes any sense. So when you go to z-score, z-scores are your standard normal scores. Standard normal goes uh, mean of zero, standard deviation of one. And so everything is basically on a z-score scale and it's independent. The standard scores make things independent of your scale of measure. So when you standardize things, you use z equals x minus mu over sigma, which if you haven't taken intrastats, don't worry about it. But that's the typical way um, that you learn an intrastats class. This isn't... Uh, this isn't a computer that I can write on, so I can't annotate things. But when you put things in standard nor normal scales, it eliminates any measurement scale issues, which is why you want to do that. Not every data mining technique, but a lot of them you need to do standard normal scores and do not try to do like a lot of data mining stuff without doing that. Because what data mining is doing is it's looking for like how far things are away from each other and not standardizing things just makes a big mess. Um, it, it creates like false false clusters. Okay. The second thing you wanna do is determine the number of clusters. Now this is something that I don't really expect you to fully understand. If you take data mining, um, we're gonna talk about this a lot, but um, as well as the issue with normalization. So this, this week, I can, kind of like going through this kind of like at a sort of superficial level. Um, and so determine the number of clusters. That is actually determined on variability of something called a scree plot. I'm not gonna like really talk about what that actually is. I'll show you one in lab. But what it does is it visually tells you like where the variability drops off and then where that variability drops off, that's the number of clusters you wanna use. Okay. So this is actually the lab code, which I originally borrowed from somewhere else because um, we're not, by the way, we're not using R for data mining. We're going to use orange. And orange, you don't actually have to program with orange, which is why we're using it. Um, it's really cool. It's, it's like an awesome tool that's grossly underestimated. Um, they started, the reason I'm using orange is I initially looked into using this business analytics book for data mining, which is kind of a good book. They used orange. The problem is that book was, first of all, it's crazy expensive. Second of all, it's like not even totally out yet. And third of all, it was a mess because I had to like redo the examples anyway. So it's just like, forget the book, but I'm still going to use orange. Um, and then I think a student introduced me to orange, but orange is actually really good. And orange uses Python underneath it. So if you still want to do Python, you kind of can. And so if a student in data mining really wants to do the Python coding, the Python is still there, but a student who doesn't want to do any coding doesn't have to because the software is visual programming and you don't have to code anything. So it just, I think, I think it's going to work out great. I don't know. Um, anyway, so this is our code. Um, our code for clustering, and I borrowed this off the internet. This data set, USA Arrest, is like somehow within R. Um, this just removes, oh, another thing you want to do when you do cluster analysis is remove missing. So that what this is doing is removing any missing variables. Then this right here, the scale DF, this is the normalization. And that's why when you look at these numbers here, they're all like standard normal scores, and they're not like, um, raw, you know, scale scores. So that's why you want to see data. This is rescaled data to standard normal scores. And this is just the first six rows of this. Okay. 
This is the code that you'll see in lab for the clustering, um, loading a bunch of libraries basically. And then this is determining how many clusters. And then this is the plot for the number of clusters. This is this right here, part two. Okay. So one is the normal scores and then two is the, the plot. Now, when you run this plot, um, what you do is you just look at it and you look at this going down and there's a point when it sort of bottoms out and this is sometimes called elbowing. And so that is at the four. And then that basically tells you that you should do four clusters. Okay. So it's kind of hard to explain, but it's actually easy to just look at the plot and see. Um, usually there's a pretty clear little drop off like that. So you can see that this goes down, 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 down. And then at four, it's basically bottomed out. This one actually bubbles up a little at five, but don't worry about that. So four is the number of clusters to use. So then what you do is you run the clustering algorithm with four clusters set, and then you can look at it. Okay. So this is really cool. Um, this is the code that you're going to see in lab. This is the K means clustering. It comes from, um, it comes from package, package cluster, but I think it's also in base R. Um, I think package cluster, I just needed to do the graph. But so this is k-means clustering is the function. df is the data frame, because that's what I called it back here with the rescaled data. So I took the original data, put it in data frame df, um, overwrote this, removed the, removed, removed the missings, and then scaled to standard normal. And then that's what I'm feeding into my clustering algorithm with four clusters. And admittingly, I don't know what the n start's doing. I have to admit my ignorance, I forgot. Um, and then I'm storing it in a clustering object called km for k-means. And then what we get is something that we can plot. And then we plot it. This is cool. You get this. Um, this is data on states and crime. So it's a data set on some kind of data that um, this one's actually built into R. So it's like arrest data on different like really nasty things people do. And it's like all 50 states and like some type of like rates of like these things. And um, also the urban population, right? And so you want to have this zero one scale so that like the different variables don't like, um, they're not like, I mean, populations like in hundreds of thousands of people and like assault numbers are not. So you don't want to have like, you need to like even out the data with the standardization that's done here. So, but this is the data, it's data on different like bad metrics of things in people. Um, but when you get, when you see this plot, what you get is these are the states and then like the states. Now these right here are not, they're derived variables. So these are a little bit hard to understand, but what you see is you see like groupings of the state. So basically it's saying that New Hampshire and Maine um, behave very much like North and South Dakota and Vermont, which actually probably makes sense because our populations and like um, our sort of crime rates are probably pretty similar. I mean, no offense to like some of these states, you know what I mean? But like um, Georgia, Louisiana, Alabama, Tennessee are kind of like here. Um, so something about like this group of states is similar and this group of states is similar and this group of states. And if you kind of look at these, it might make like some sense. Um, like the murder rates are similar in these states and the drug rates, like drug use is probably a little bit more regional and like, here's us. Um, so it clusters based on that. And you can, you can see that with this nice cluster plot, which I like. Um, data mining will do kind of a lot of this kind of stuff. So for now it's just like a real like basic thing, but to take data, um, and, and the, the, the overview here is that this is just data that has these four variables in it. There is no like cluster one, two, three, four. Okay. So we're creating that cluster one, two, three, four. We're creating this grouping of this pattern into four clusters of the states that we didn't have before. So we now have like a way to like sort of classify these, the 50 states into these four clusters based on their crime rates, basically. Um, and that's like a pretty cool thing to do. You can think of like, this might be really useful. Like, you know, if you're doing sales analysis and you just have a bunch of raw data on what people buy, you can classify like customer behavior and you can look at like, you know, people that buy things frequently or not frequently or whatnot. And you'll actually be able to sort of analyze things and see them. 
I mean, you don't always get like a really super nice, and this one actually isn't like terrific. You can actually get clusters where it's like, you know, one's up here and one's up there. It's just great separation. But data mining will give you sort of the ability to use these techniques to explore your data and look for patterns. And so clustering is our first pattern, okay? Um, K-means is just one type. The data analysis, I mean, the data mining course does do more. That's just one little taste of one specific cluster algorithm. Okay. Um, clustering is used in genetics. This is actually what I did. This is why I like data mining. My master's thesis was in microarray data analysis and cluster analysis. I remember like presenting my master's presentation and showing them my clustering, um, which was really cool. Um, organizing things, categorizing things, finding new patterns. So cluster analysis is kind of like a cool technique. Okay. Um, the next one I want to talk about is association analysis. This one, I'm not a business person, so I actually admittingly just learned this this summer um, to do this stuff for data mining. Association analysis is also known as market basket analysis. It's a data mining technique to discover relations um, among items in a data set, but it focuses on patterns of co-occurrence and dependency and items that tend to appear together in transactions. Shopping carts. This is basically what Amazon uses when you're surfing on Amazon and look something up and it suggests that you buy something else. And that's all coming from like a behind the scenes analysis of people that buy this tend to also buy this. That's what association analysis is used for. It's incredibly widely used in retail marketing sales type of stuff. I didn't know about it because I'm like a science kind of person and like education. We never but this is apparently something gigantically and hugely used in retail sales analysis, marketing analysis, and stuff like that. Um, it's also used, and I didn't know this, it's also used like in healthcare to associate symptoms with diseases. Um, so it's actually a really cool technique. It's unlike the, the basis for these techniques is different. Cluster analysis just deals with like mathematical distance of values. Association analysis actually uses probability theory um, that in data mining, I sort of teach you the background probability theory. So association analysis is actually using a lot of conditional probability um, behind what's going on here, like the probability of buying this given that you bought that. Um, association analysis discovers patterns, um, very valuable insights for understanding customer behavior, optimizing product placements, like where you put stuff on shelf. So this is like a huge thing in like the business world. Um, retail stores analyze purchase data. Again, you know, um, people who buy diapers tend to buy baby formula, yada, yada. A lot of cross-selling strategies. Bookstores, people that buy mystery novels buy detectives. Supermarket, what people buy together, chips and salsa. Um, or in my case, guacamole. I like guacamole better than salsa. But you can see how this, this is, it's pretty um, widely used. Business, again, um, I probably shouldn't have done this so redundantly, but business use is big time. Association analysis, like cluster analysis, is unsupervised. We haven't seen a supervised one yet, so you don't have anything to compare it to. But that means that there's no, like, label. Um, you know, there isn't, like, you know, frequent shopper already, like, in there. And association analysis doesn't really create... It's unsupervised, but unlike cluster analysis, it doesn't create clusters. What it creates is um, it's item sets and probability of purchasing this with that so it's different from cluster analysis and its outcome um yeah and i did not do now i did not do any association analysis in the r code um in the lab this week because i admittingly don't know how to do it in r <laughs> it is actually doable in r and there's like really nice ways of doing it but i don't know them and um it's it's kind of too much um this week has enough stuff to do but you will learn association analysis using orange, um, which is, I got, um, again, it was, it was the business analytics book that was using this particular package. And I, I didn't copy any of their, their stuff from that book, but that's where I kind of went and learned association analysis from the business analytics books. So, yeah. Um, so there'll be more of that in data mining if you take data mining. The next one is classification. Um, Let's see what slide we're on. Okay, 34. So I'm actually going to break the video now and do the second video starting on this. Okay.